Factions, and this one is a competitive 4X style game where each player is going to be controlling their own unique faction with their own special ability. But what's interesting about the way that you activate your faction ability in this game is that you do have to spend these faction tokens. What's neat about this is that you have a limited supply of these for the entirety of the game, and once you spend them, you can never get them back. But each faction does also have a few goals that you can try to complete in order to get a few more of those added into your supply. The main board is going to be made up of a bunch of different modular tiles that players will be able to explore and try to take control of. And the way that players do this is by using action cubes at the top of their action board and then assigning them to the various actions in the bottom section of the board. Players can use actions to do things like explore the various tiles out on the board because they do start face down, and you can use an explore action in order to flip an adjacent tile face up. Tiles can have different icons on them that could trigger an event card to be drawn, which could spawn hostile creatures or present different options or opportunities but the different tiles can also allow you to build one of your buildings there. Of course, in order to do that, you do have to move on to that tile and there's an action for that. And there is also the build action, which allows you to build all sorts of different buildings with the main ones being the outposts, which will generate a particular type of resource indicated on top of that building. It generates a resource as soon as you build it, but then there's also another action that you can perform in order to pump out even more resources. What's cool about this building is that it can also be upgraded, which will allow it to produce two resources for just one single produce action. But you can also use the build action to build all sorts of other buildings that can grant you different actions or bonuses, and you can use the build action to build additional units, which you can deploy at any of your outposts. Players will also be managing a couple different tracks, with one of those tracks being their popularity. This, of course, can go both in the positive and negative direction, depending on how much the people like you. But if you're able to keep this as a positive number, this is going to get you a extra action cube that you'll be able to spend in order to take an additional action on your turn. And of course, you can spend resources if you take the propaganda action in order to increase the amount that the people like you. Or alternatively, you can also do that to decrease how much the people like someone else. Another reason that it's good to have the people on your side is because you may want to occasionally collect taxes in order to get some additional resources for your turn. But anytime you do that, it's going to be lowering your popularity. So having a bit of space to do that without losing your additional action is always ideal. But another way that you can spend your resources is to take the buy a power card action. Whenever you do that, you're going to be gaining a power card, which is a dual use card, and it's going to give you a couple different options. Either you can spend it in order to perform its special ability according to the requirements of that card, or you can hang on to it and use it in combat. The way that combat's initiated in this game is that any player can use an action to attack adjacent units or buildings. Whenever you do that, you're going to be comparing your overall strength, which is the strength contributed by your units, and the advantages they get for the particular terrain that they are currently on. And then players can also spend leader cubes from their leaderboard in order to add additional strength to their side. Each player then draws a power card, whether or not they already have one in their hand. But if they do, then they can choose which power card they want to use in that battle. Otherwise, they just have to use the one they just drew. This is why it's nice to hang onto those cards if you're able to, because it does give you a little bit more flexibility in the combat. You'll then be comparing the overall strength, and whichever player is higher wins the battle, and they're going to be gaining some victory points. But then they may also get some other bonuses as well, including placing one of their influence cubes from the top of their board onto the other player's board. And these influence cubes are really nice to get rid of because each time you do that, it's going to be gaining you a victory point at the end of the game. But you can only put one on each of the other player's board, which does incentivize you to try and attack and win against each player at least once. Luckily, there are some other ways that you can get rid of influence cubes, and that's by completing various achievement cards. And there's going to be a bunch of different cards that players are going to be trying to complete. And at the start of your next turn, if you've completed any of those achievements, then it's at that point that you'll be able to sign those tokens from your board. The final round's triggered once a player is able to assign five of their achievement tokens. And then the player with the most victory points at the end of that round is the winner of the game. And if you do want to check this one out, I will have it linked in the description down below.